So the first one is sine inverse and it's negative. So it can't be quadrant one. So it's the other option for sine four. Okay, so draw your triangle in quadrant four. And the same instructions go as when we did the unit circle forwards. When we do it backwards, your work, quote unquote, is a labeled triangle. I'm not asking for a whole lot there. You have to draw a labeled triangle or I'm not gonna give you full credit. All right, sine is the Y value. So that negative a half goes where the Y value goes. It's just backwards. You have the side and you're looking for the angle instead of being given the angle and looking for the side, it's just backwards. So what's your angle that goes across from a half? Uh, well, this side will be square root of three over two, but I'm looking for the angle. Pi over six, good. Now, if you're in quadrant one, that's just your answer. If you're not in quadrant one, that's not your answer. It's how you got the Good, you have to rotate backwards to get there. So it's negative pi over six. Why can't you go forwards and just go the whole way around and get 11 pi over six? Yeah, there, well, this one doesn't have asymptotes, but do you remember when we highlighted and you could only go but so far? It's like the road is closed over here. These two quadrants don't exist. So it's like, if you try to go forwards, it's like, oh, road's closed. You have to go the other way. All right, let's try this one. It's cosine inverse and it's negative. So it can't be quadrant one. What's the, bless you. What's the other option two? Good, so draw your triangle in quadrant two. Now cosine is the X value. So your negative a half goes along the X axis. That means the other side is square root of three over two. And what's your angle across from square root of three over two? It is pi over three. A lot of people will just remember the threes go across from each other. That's the way you can remember that. Your answer is not pi over three though. Your answer is the amount of rotation it took to get there. So it would be from here all the way over to there. The denominator has to be three. Radians are great because the denominator has to match. So what's the one that has the denominator of three over here? Yeah, two pi over three. Like it couldn't be sixths or fourths. Like it has to be thirds. That can't change. So you're... Options are very, very, very limited. You have like almost no choices. All right, I heard you guys talking about this one. Instead of a triangle, what are we gonna get for this one? A circle, because it's a negative one. Sine is the Y value. So you're looking for a place where the Y value is negative one. Is it up, down, left, or right? Down, because that point is zero, negative one. That's the amount of work I need to see for something like that. Now your answer is the amount of rotation. Again, you can't go over here. These two quadrants don't exist. You have to go backwards to get there. So it's negative how much? Pi over two, good. Cool. All right, this one is positive, which means we are in quadrant one. So that's nice. Now I have this written on the board, so unfortunately it's not gonna end up in the video. But look at what I have up here. This is the one that we're looking at. So watch me point to it. So it's one half over square root of three over two. This was tangent. Tangent is y over x. So your y value is a half. Your x value is square root of three over two. So a half goes here, square root of three over two goes here. But listen to me. If you struggle with which one goes there, what goes where? It's either like this or flipped around. Do you get what I'm saying? You have a 50-50 shot of just guessing. Put the one half somewhere and the square root of three over two somewhere. And if it's wrong, I'll take off half a point. And if everything else is correct, then you're good, all right? So what's your angle across from a half? Five. Pi over six. And because we're in quadrant one, that's your answer. Now, I wanna do a compare and contrast and you're gonna need to listen to me because I can save you some work, but you have to listen. Do you see how this is cosine of cosine inverse? What do inverse functions do to each other? Like if you had a squared and a square root, they can like these are going to go away and you simply get two fifths. That is the only question on the test where I don't need a triangle. But you have to continue listening to me. Do you see how this one is sine of sine inverse? Those will cancel and you will get whatever's there, which in this case is two fifths. Do you see how the inverse one is the one on the inside? Then you can do that. Go ahead and flip over. If the inverse one is the one on the outside, that won't work, okay? But 
I do throw you one of these on the test so you don't have to do a triangle for that. If you remember which way is which, you don't have to draw a triangle, okay? So if the inverse one's on the inside, you're good, just put the answer. If it's on the outside, we're gonna have to actually do the problem. I'm gonna cover that up with my hand. We're gonna just do the inside part. This is a review from back in unit eight. What quadrant is four thirds in? Three, draw yourself a triangle in quadrant three. You are really smart. Your reference angle is pi over three. It's either pi over six, pi over three, or pi over four. Those are the only options. So what goes across from that? Square root of three over two. That means the other side is a half. What's negative? Both of them. Very good. Perfect. Sorry, that's a negative there. I kind of ran into the edge of the paper. We're doing sine. Sine is the y value. Which one is the y value? Good. Okay, watch. That means this part right here that I'm circling equals that, negative square root of three over two. So I'm gonna take my hand back off of this. This is gonna be sine inverse of negative square root of three over two. And we're gonna do that problem exactly like we did the ones on the front. So it's a two-step problem. Now sine inverse, it can only be in quadrant one or quadrant four. And because this is negative, it's gonna have to be four. I'm just going to draw it on the same grid. You can draw a whole new grid if you want, but you can put it on the same one. Signs your y value. So your negative square root of three over two goes there. Your angle's pi over three. What you should be saying to yourself is, hey, that's actually the exact same triangle just reflected over. Do you get what I'm saying? It's the exact same triangle. And the reason why is because that sine inverse and that sine, same thing, just flipped over. What's your amount of rotation to get there though? Uh, Negative pi over three is your answer. We're just gonna try that one more time. Again, I'm just gonna cover up the outside, pretend that's not there. This is like a review from unit eight. What quadrant is 11 six in? Four, good, so you guys know your unit circle. And so your angle is pi over six, your reference angle is pi over six. So what goes across from the pi over six? One half, that means the other side, square root of three over two. Um, what's negative? The one half, good. Oh, good, it's X. You guys are saying the answer before I can even get there. Which one of these is the X value? Okay, watch. This part I'm circling equals that square root of three over two. So I'm gonna take my hand back off of this. What we end up with is cosine inverse of square root of three over two. And we're gonna evaluate that like we did the ones on the front side of the paper. Oh, why is it the first quadrant? I love this. I don't even have to ask the questions. You're answering them before I ask them. Why is it quadrant one? It's positive. Your X value is that square root of three over two. I wrote it kind of big. This would be a one half. And so your angle is Pi over six, do you see how these are the same triangle but flipped, it's just being reflected? And because we're in quadrant one, that's your answer, it's just pi over six.